1982, when a friend was dying of cancer, artist Bobby Burnett created a glass angel for her and sent it to her room in the hospital. It proved a ray of hope, and soon families of other cancer patients were requesting the angels. She eventually found herself creating a huge volunteer organization to produce the angels for the many requests around the country and around the world. It's a story of how art can soothe during the most difficult times. My involvement in stained glass and stained glass angel just happened. It was kind of a metaphor. It's nothing that I planned or intended. In December of 1982, I created one three-dimensional stained glass angel for a friend who went to Johns Hopkins for three months. She had leukemia. Other friends cooked meals for her. That's not my area of expertise, so I decided to make her one three-dimensional angel to keep beside her bed at the hospital while she was ill. After I made the first angel for her, other people wanted them. In the beginning, the people came to, to work with me had no background as they do now, and they were hesitant to come because they thought, I can't do anything. I said, you can put stamps on an envelope or you can address envelopes. And I walked them through the studio to see the cutting, the drawing, the grinding, boiling, soldering, and they watched what I showed them and then they had an opportunity to select that which they preferred to do. It became a challenge for me to make sure everything was consistent and that's when we got started with our angel assembly line. Now I have over 90 workers. The most important thing about the angel project is that we make the angels and then we sell them here and we give 100% of our proceeds for cancer research equipment at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore and cancer patient equipment at Anne Arundel Hospital in Annapolis. This is our 24th year and we are so excited because to date we have given over $640,000 for cancer research and patient care equipment. It's an overwhelming feeling for me. I sometimes come down here early in the morning and sit and look at the angels and wonder, how did this happen? How could this have developed into this? But I think the most important thing is everyone in the world has been touched by someone with cancer. And therefore, they need to have something to bring them some comfort. The volunteers and I who make the angels with our hands and work together feel that the angels themselves are beautiful, but they convey a message of love, hope, care, and comfort to everyone who receives one. As for me, I can't believe how this has happened, and it's not work, it's not anything other than my whole entire life, and I feel so honored to be having these people work with me. My volunteers are my family. They are my friends. They are the ones I turn to and work with. And they have provided the opportunity and the support to me to do this. And I feel that throughout these 24 years, I have this wonderful love-hate relationship with angels because they have consumed my life and they have directed everything that I do. And that's a wonderful place to be. I would like to just invite anyone who's interested to come and visit our studio. I think it's difficult to explain what happens here. I think it's important to see it because it's not only seeing something but feeling what happens here. It rewards not only the people who receive the art but the people who work here.